I'm sure you've all played around with a compass and a magnet. If you haven't, go grab a magnet and a compass and have yourself some fun because it is kind of amazing. But because this channel is all about circuits, what we're going to do is build a circuit that consists of a coil of wire and a battery. And what we're going to do is create a magnetic field that affects the compass needle. Just like using a real magnet, what this is is an electromagnet. To do this experiment, you can probably find this material for free. This is bell wire, which is often used to wire up doorbells in houses. It's cheap and brittle, and honestly, I don't like it a whole lot, but I had a bunch of it laying around, so I opted to wind my coil with bell wire. Next, you'll need some kind of a, a tube. This is a tube from a spool of twine. A toilet paper tube will work perfectly fine. You can also wind a coil around a piece of scrap wood. You could wind a coil around a small box. The reason we want to wind a coil at all, because we can certainly do this experiment with a straight wire, is twofold. A, you're going to get a concentration of magnetic field emanating off of this coil. Two, and this is probably just as important as the first point, it is potentially dangerous to run a current through a circuit that has no resistance or very low resistance. An uncoiled wire by itself connected to a battery is a short circuit, and if the wire is thin enough, it will catch fire. The battery will certainly heat up. We're going to avoid that by using a coil. What this does is creates a load for the current to go through. So now we have an actual circuit rather than a short circuit. I think we can illustrate this point using a 9 volt battery and a sacrificial LED. That bright flash was the LED, of course, burning up. With a piece of wire of this particular gauge, it takes a lot more current to burn it up. However, it will get hot, and that's not a lot of fun. So again, we're going to wind a coil, plus it allows us to concentrate the magnetic field. This is an experiment that was originally done by a gentleman, a Danish guy, named uh, Hans Christian Ørsted. And what Ørsted said is basically this. He said, if you have a wire, and you have current going through that wire, it will create what we call a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of that wire. Another way to visualize this principle is called the right hand rule. So if you take your hand and place it in front of you, your thumb is the direction of the wire. It's the direction of the current in the wire to be more specific. I've drawn an arrow here. We're going that way. Our current is going that way. The curl of your fingers towards your palm that, that represents the magnetic field. So with that whole right hand rule thing, it's, it's direction of the current and the orientation of the magnetic field in relation to that current. It's always, 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 always at a right angle perpendicular on the three dimensional planes that we speak of. You've got your Z plane this way and you've got your XY plane for the magnetic field. So if current's going this way, the only thing you've done is you flip-flop the polarity of that magnetic field. Therefore, you'll see a compass spin clockwise, and if you change the polarity of the magnetic field by changing the direction of the current, you'll see that same compass spin in the opposite direction. And that's called the right-hand rule. It's a good little trick to learn and keep in your back pocket as you learn this stuff, because it seems to come in handy from time to time. So here we go. I've got this old bell wire and I just want to get rid of it. So I'm going to use it for this experiment. You can use any old wire as long as it's insulated. It ought to be insulated. It should be insulated. Make sure your wire has insulation on it. Don't use uninsulated wire. Now toilet paper tubes tend to kind of collapse easily, so have patience with it. What you want to do is have a bunch of wire hanging off of one end when you start. We're going to wind the coil and we'll have a good length of wire hanging off this side. The reason you want a long piece of wire on the end is so that you can position your battery and your coil and your compass. It gives you some options. Don't worry about how much wire to use. It actually does not matter for this level of an experiment. Just start winding. After having wound about a thousand coils in my life, I, by hand, 
It never gets any better. You're always fighting these things, so you just got to stick with it. As you're doing this, make sure your wires aren't crossing over each other, overlapping, or are all confused. Keep your windings linear and smooth and beautiful. Well, I managed to use up my whole spool of bell wire, so I'm pretty happy about that. When you've wound at least half of the length of the tube, tape it off. Also, pro tip, don't carry this kind of stuff through the airport. I'm not joking. Short Story used to do a lot of maker stuff for a major corporation around the world. Spent a lot of time lugging experiments like this in and out of airports. And we learned early on to become friends with the various customs officials and have manifests describing what was in our cases. And we also carried glowing letters of recommendation. Of course, a few of you already saw this coming. The guys with the uh, bulletproof vests and the x-ray machines. They don't see Hans Christian Orsted when they gaze upon this in your pelican case. They see something much different. And just for a few extra style points, I was heating up the hot glue gun in the background there. I'm just gonna run a bead of it across three different sections of this coil to kind of keep it from misbehaving. It might be overkill, but now that the coil is wound, we do need to strip the insulation off the end of these wires. So use your wire stripper tool if you have one. If you don't, you can always use a pocket knife. Again, take care. I think the best way to do this is laying the wire flat and laying the knife flat and always cut towards your chum, never your thumb, as they say. All right, we're ready to begin the experiment. If you happen to have a compass with one of these viewfinder things on it, that might work better, because then you can sit it up here on top of the windings. Hopefully it's pretty clear what to do here. We're gonna take one wire and touch it to one of the terminals on the battery, and the other wire, briefly hold it down, and then remove it. Briefly hold it down and remove it. Now I'm, I'm trying to make contact with the battery and close the circuit when that arrow is hitting this side and kind of getting a little extra momentum kick. In a way, this is a motor. Uh, with, it's a one bearing motor is one way to look at it. Now, Hans Christian Erst had said that if you reverse the current, then you reverse the magnetic field. What happens when we do that? And... Okay, and... Here we go. So by reversing the current, you reverse the magnetic field. As for the homeschool curriculum for this, this is essentially the experiment that you run when you recreate Hans Christian Ersted's initial experiments that showed that current flowing through a wire creates a magnetic field around that wire at a perpendicular angle. That's basically the meat and potatoes of it. I do think there is some value in being able to diagram the right hand rule uh, simply by drawing the wire And current is usually represented with the letter I. So if I say my current is going that away, I'm going to get this magnetic field that radiates out at a plane perpendicular to that of the wire. Another way to visualize that is to take a piece of cardstock, punch a hole with a pencil, and draw concentric circles. This is going to be our magnetic field. The pencil is our wire. And there you have another visualization. So you've got Right hand rule, using your hand, you've got this, and you've got this. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Remember, keep it simple, keep it cheap or free, keep it safe, and keep it fun. Thanks for watching.